week to week. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like Boston Scott, man. I like I, I like too. Other two. Gets, I'm a big fan of Boston yeah, Scott. Yeah, he gets lost in between those big tackles and defensive tackles. And next thing you know, bow, he's up on you so quick. That next thing you know, he's got ten yards. You know, yeah. I like his game. Yeah. Man. Well, I think the, I, like game. I think the misperception with him, Barrett, is like, oh, he's a little guy. You, you can't do anything right. between the tackles. He's right. pretty darn tough between the tackles, man. He's a I'm not saying dude. he would have pound them in there yeah. thirty times a game, but yeah. I'm just saying it's not like you have to limit him and you can only get him in space. He can do stuff between the tackles. He's he's strong, and you're right. He does get lost, man. That's real. That's for sure. What's up, everybody, in the chat section? We see you. I hope you're doing well out there, everybody listening, everybody streaming. Thank you as well. Big show today, guys. Seth Joyner, 1230. Seth Joyner, uh, now of our post-game show here at Jacob with Derek, with Mike Missanelli, with Devin Caney. Seth at 1230. 1 o'clock, Paul Domowicz. Paul's got a great piece on jacobsports.com on Dallas Goddard. I'm going to say the forgotten, man. That's probably a little bit too strong, but – we, we're so hyper focused on AJ Brown and Devontae and yeah. you know, everything else. He he is sort of a you know like third fourth option that you think of, but nonetheless a top five tight end in, in the NFL. This this guy can eat this year. He would be he will be the quarterback's best friend. You always know tight ends. Tight ends are are you know tied to the hip when it comes to a quarterback. You look all the great quarterbacks have great tight ends. I mean Rodgers might be the exception, but I mean you look. I mean, you had Brett Favre, you had Chewy, you know, Mark Jamor, uh, you know, Steve Young, you know, he had, um, what's his name? Um, uh, oh, Steve Young Brent, had Brent Jones. Brent Jones, yeah, Brent yeah. Jones. Um, it, it, that's, they usually go hand in hand. Tom Brady had two of them, actually, before one, you know, flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, he had Brock and Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's – um, it's usually a quarterback's best, especially early in their career, a quarterback's best friend because he's the guy that's going to get the ball out early. He's the guy usually right in front of you in the middle of the field. You can see him there. He's a bigger target. Yeah. Uh, gives you a more forgiving target because he is so big. And plus he's a matchup nightmare because he's bigger than safeties, but he's faster than linebackers. Mm -hmm. So it's usually a, a, a better matchup when you go to a tight end as opposed to going out to the receivers. Well, the other thing with Goddard is he's such a good all-around player. He can block yes. too. He's not just a pass. A lot of guys now are just strictly receivers in, in a lot of ways, you know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He, he can give you both. He's a complete football player, man. So. When when you when you let a Zach Ertz go, that tells you that the baton has truly been passed, and they they have the utmost confidence in a Dallas Goddard uh, to be your lead tight end. And I will go so far as to say I think. Goddard is much tougher than Ertz was after the catch. Ah, da, da. You know, yak yardage. Yeah, that yak mm -hmm. yardage is huge, especially for tight ends. We, it's, it's a given for receivers, but even it's even bigger for tight ends. And Goddard is – he's not at the George Kittle level, but he's not that far behind him. I mean, he is a physical tight end, uh, athletic, great hands, has improved tremendously in his blocking aspect of his game. Um, and, and, and once you once you let go of a Zach Ertz and turn the reins over to a get Dallas Goddard, that's when you know Goddard has arrived. You know, it, it plain and simple. That's when he has arrived because most teams would kill to have a dual tight end situation like an Ertz yes, exactly. and a Goddard. You look at you look at New England right now with Hunter Henry and John U. Smith. I mean, t a great tight end combination. You go back. To the, to the days when they had a young Gronkowski with Hernandez. You know, Hernandez was more like a receiver more so than a tight end. Yep. Right? Um, very few teams have that luxury of having two equally talented tight ends. But obviously the Eagles felt they couldn't pay both. Right. You know, and they did, did, did you know, urge a favor by, by sending to him, him to a place like Arizona – to finish out his career, but you know, I, I love the maturation of Dallas Goddard right now. And yeah. you know, he kind of um, <clears throat> he kind of was holding back Dallas Goddard in, in so many ways yes. because yep. they ran a lot of eleven personnel, which is one running back, one tight end, and because of they run a lot of eleven, you know, Dallas Goddard's talent was virtually being unused because of it. Yeah. Um. Once he left, you know, if you. They say if you double up the yards, you know, even, you know, a little less than the double, 
he'd been right around a thousand yards um, of, 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 of receiving yardage. What makes him to me better than Ertz is his ability to block mm-hmm. they, and his ability to get yak yards. You know, once, you, once, once Ertz caught the ball, he was hit. He was going yep. down. Yep. There wasn't the yak yard. He was going straight down. But he was his Caught route a lot of balls, running, though. Yeah, yeah, his route running and the way his ability to catch the rock, man. He, yeah. You know, I, I take it. You know what I mean? I no, take just, it. He'd be yeah. arguably the biggest touchdown in Eagles history uh, for Zach Ertz. Not, not, exactly. a bad, not a bad little label. All right, so the big news uh, coming out of the Eagles. Two things out of yesterday, but let's start with the bigger news. Uh, Andre Dillard. Uh, has a a fracture, a displaced fracture in his forearm. Now, the the good news is uh, it doesn't appear he's going to need surgery. Uh, The the, the bone is still aligned with the arm, which I would assume just means cast it, you know, let it it mend, and, and, you know, good to go. They don't expect it to be a real long-term thing, Uh, certainly not the season or anything like that. But, uh, you know, that's that's a blow to your depth, you know, for sure. And I was glad they kept him around simply because this kind of stuff happens, man. I, I didn't think it'd be happening to him in a, in a practice, but it happens. And, you know, you're down a guy now who is a quality, someone you could you know, plug in at that left spot if something happens to my lotta, that's for sure. It's, it's not, not good news, but it, I guess it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's tough, man. You know, um, he's quality backup, but we don't need him right now. That's the good thing. We don't need him right now. In fact, I hope he doesn't get on the field because that right. means one of our tackles is hurt. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm happy with the fact that he, uh, you know, he's, he's a backup right now and we didn't need him. But I mean, I hate that he's, he's, he's injured himself, you know, especially, you know, the way he played, you know, the last two games. I thought he played pretty well the last two games. You know, I, I hate to say this, but it was only a matter of time before somebody got injured on the Eagles. When you consider the wow factor of injuries that have happened across the league throughout training camp and preseason this summer, and we are sitting here applauding the Eagles for being relatively healthy going in, and they still are going into that first game, but it was bound to happen sooner or later um, that somebody in this team was going to get injured. And luckily, I hate, I hate to say luckily because I yeah, don't want to yeah. see anybody injured. Right. Um, we understand what um, you're saying, yeah. You know what I mean, but but yeah. but but luckily it wasn't a starter, so, uh, you know, and and the good thing is, like you said, Rob, uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be season ending. Yeah, and I th- look, uh, a Barrett's right. You'd rather it be now if it's going right. to happen. You'd rather right. have it early. Right. Um, I, I think too, all things considered, when you look at other teams and teams near them, like the Giants and some others who have been killed by injuries. You know, it hasn't been that bad. And part right. of that is by design. The Eagles are, are clearly make that a priority, you know, to have guys not get hurt. So that from that standpoint, it's worked, you know, for the most part. So anyway, it, it, that's the uh, that's one part of the news. They signed a running back, Trey Sermon, who uh, started his career in Oklahoma. He actually played with Hertz when, when those guys were there together. Then he finished up. That's what I know. Yeah, he finished that's what up. I remember. He, he had a grad year at Ohio State two years ago, which was his last year. He was with the 49ers last, uh, last season. He was a third round pick and they caught him after one year, which isn't a great sign, but if you wanted some size, you got some size. He's not the fastest guy in the world, a four, six 40. Uh, but he's on the bigger end of this thing. Uh, played nine games last year. He started to the numbers aren't not a lot of attempts, 41 rushes, 167 yards. Nonetheless, I, I, you know, he was a, he was a decent college player who caught your eye. I, I don't know how this is going to translate, but it's a I, I, it's not a bad move as far as I'm concerned. I remember him at um, Oklahoma. You know, he was number four at Oklahoma. And I remember him being a dynamic player. I mean, he was running over people. Uh, he wasn't running past anybody, but he had enough speed that people couldn't catch him when he did break free. Uh, he had really good hands coming out the backfield, little swing passes and stuff like that. But I mean, I thought he was a very serviceable player. I thought he's pretty good. Um, does he fit in here? I mean, you can always you can always want a big back, and I think that'll be his purpose here. But will he get a, the amount of carries? You know, I, I, if you look at it, I think he was more of a disgruntled employee. Yeah. While it's Forty ers and that's why you know they let him go. I, mean, I guess he voiced his opinion a little too much, and they let him go because of it. Yeah, I'm not even sure he's going to be activated, frankly. Right, 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 you know? right. Well, if he is, the question is, who is he taking touches away from? Right. 
That's a right. big question. If yeah, I, I mean, system, do you want him taking touches from Boston Scott or Gainwell or I, Sanders? I, I don't. I'm telling you. Well, you don't know. If he's productive, you know, give him the ball. But then who suffers in the wake of that? I mean, yeah. whoever yeah. The, whoever has a hot hand, that's who you give the ball to. Right. And, you know, Miles Sanders is going to be the horse. Um, not, you know, we, we're not, we don't have that bell cow back. It'll be running back by committee. But uh, Miles Sanders will be that – he will have the most carries, but – Week to week, this, yeah, yeah. But I, I like Boston Scott, man. I like, I, I like too. I do too. Gets, I'm a big fan of Boston. Scott. Yeah, he gets lost in between those big tackles and defensive tackles, and next thing you know, bow, he's up on you so quick that next thing you know, he's got ten yards. You know, yeah. I like his game, yeah. man. Well, Seems I think the, I, like I think the misperception with him, Barrett, is like, oh, he's a little guy. You, you can't do anything right. between the tackles. He's right. pretty darn tough between the tackles, man. He's a I'm not big saying dude. you want to pound them in there yeah. thirty times a game, but yeah. I'm just saying. It's not like you have to limit him and you can only get him in space. He can do stuff between the tackles. He's he's strong and you're right. He does get lost, man. That's real. He's he's a thick dude too. You see how thick he is, man? Yeah, he's a big dude. He's like he's a small guy. Yeah. Very similar. His, his low center of gravity yep, gives yep. him a distinct advantage because when a bigger man tries to go down, the bigger man can't get down as low as he is, and that's why he bounces off a lot of tackles, man. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, he does very seldom do you see him go down on the first hit. Very seldom do you yeah. see him go down. His legs, are, his little bowling ball, bowling pin <laughs> legs, man, just keep churning, man. Um, I, I love everything that you know. First and foremost, I love the fact that he dispels dispels the myth that the little man cannot survive in the NFL, yeah. right? <laughs> you know. And secondly, he's productive. Mm -hmm. You know, very productive. Whenever he gets his chance, you know, when he got his chance when Miles went down last year, man, that running game didn't miss a beat. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't think I don't think it'll be the case. It's a shame that he has to play understudy to Miles Sanders in a lot of ways. But you know, Miles, like Barrett said, Miles is their bell cow. You know, for whatever that is for a Miles Sanders, a bell cow in Nick Sirianni's offense, it's fifteen carries, not twenty five, yeah. not twenty eight <laughs> carries. It's fifteen <laughs> carries if you're lucky. Well, and it, it could be less this year. Uh, oh, I, they're, oh not goodness, gonna, yes. they're not going to run at the rate they ran it last year, uh, you know, unless there's re some real issues, unless Jalen's really struggling or guys are hurt or whatever. You're not going to see them run as much as they ran last year. That's for sure. No. So, look, they will get their opportunities. It was weird last year. They went away from Boston Scott for a while, and then uh, and then they went back to him. And he, you know, it wasn't like he played poorly when they went away. I don't know. I didn't. That one was kind of puzzling to me. Um, the, the way that played out, but. Look, I think he game right, well. Right. All these guys are good compliments to each other. Game well is really yep. good out of the backfield. I saw Chris ask on on the in the chat the sermon uh, return kicks and punts. He doesn't, so we still don't know right now how that's going to shake out in terms of he punts. returns I, punts. Also, no, does not, does not. Oh, we kicks not. though. No, no, neither one. I don't think so. I don't think so he returns kicks. The for it well, I think I, it's it's feeling more and more like. Um, you know, it, it's going to be Watkins definitely with kicks, maybe punts too. You know, use a lot, unless, unless they just bring up Cubby from the practice squad. But here, here, uh, going back to Boston Scott for a minute, here's all you need to know about him being lost, as Rob alluded to. He didn't have a carry until October 24th against Vegas. Wow. October yeah, 24th. Now, think about how many games that was. Yeah. And I'm he had seven carries for 24 yards that game. Right. But until then, he played a game the previous week against Dallas. He had no rushing attempts, and he had two receptions for five yards. That was it. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, he was, he was basically he was just there. Was it just a body? I mean, they weren't even utilizing him, man. I mean, well, I still the other, get it. one thing to keep in mind during that stretch, Derek, they were throwing a lot more. That's before they figured out what their identity sure, was. Sure, sure. Right, and that's also coincided with them starting off two and five, or you know, the, the poor start. So. I think some of it was that. Some of it was just figuring, like, you know what, man? This isn't who we are. We want to win. You want to get to the playoffs? You better be able to run the ball a little bit. And then they incorporated him a little bit more. But I don't think he'll make that same mistake this year, right? You no. know, he'll, he'll get he'll get touches this year. You know, and Gamewell will get his touches out of the backfield catching the ball. I I, they'll, I think they'll stay true to those guys. I think so. I don't, I don't see Gamewell really being a, um... too involved. Yeah, too involved. I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest. I don't see Third him. down even? No. No, I think they're going to use Miles, you know, on those type of downs, if anything. And they like Scott during those downs also. Right. Um, I mean, when they if they go in with a game plan, have him at slot or something like that, I see him using – have him then. But 
I mean, in what situation do you see him coming in and, and being better than Miles in receiving it? You know, I mean, Miles he, doesn't catch the ball particularly well. Well, we can't say that now. I mean, he did last year, but now he caught the one pass, the one screenplay he got thrown to. You. Right now, he's one hundred percent. So, yeah, well, <laughs> he's also not a great run blocker. Well, you know, um, yeah. Gainwell also had his his hiccups with um, yeah his moments fumbling the ball. Yeah, I hear you. So we'll I hear see. you. Look, it's going to be interesting. Let's uh let's grab a, an early one here. Uh, Xander, we're going to hit it a little bit early. We're going to have Seth Joyner join us. Seth, now part of the Jacob Sports Channel uh, post game show. We can't wait to talk to Seth. One o'clock, Paul Domowich. We're going to be rolling with football, man. We are the the final weekend again without football until February. Woo, friggin' who, man? I cannot <laughs> wait. It can't come. For NFL football, there's been college football, but we yeah we get uh we get it cranked up next weekend. And it gets real a week from Sunday, that's for sure. All right, Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis, we are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Let's talk about finances. Let's talk Principal Financial Group and Jim Murray, the man that you should trust. I trust him, so should you. It took me a while to find the right person to, to know who to invest with. Uh, and, of course, you know how critical that is for your future, whether it's 401K, your you know IRA rollover like I've dealt with. Whatever the case may be, it could be an insurance review if you just started up a new company. It's another resource Jim can help you with. I promise you that he has steered me down the right road for sure with my stuff and you know leaving places, moving, rolling 401ks over into IRAs, you name it. Give him a call, 610-996-4751, 610-996-4751. Or you can email him, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray dot Jim at principal.com. 